Hi, I'm Kevin Lambert, and welcome to Game Design Psych 101, a series where I discuss various game design topics and how they relate to human psychology. Today's topic is often very heated in the context of collectible card games, or CCGs. That topic is randomness. Randomness in a CCG refers to the unpredictable outcome of a situation featuring a significantly randomized element. Commonly referred to by its acronym RNG, meaning Random Number Generator, or Random Number Generation, it refers to the process by which computers generate random or pseudo-random numbers, essentially creating the digital equivalent of chance. In the context of collectible card games, the term RNG is most often used when referring to elements which are determined randomly or situations which are significantly affected by chance or luck. Chance is an important part of game design. Drawing the next card from a deck in poker, determining the critical hit chance in an RPG, or rolling the dice to see how many spaces you move in a board game are all elements of chance. If there were no chance, a lot of games would become overly predictable, and without the complexity of a game like chess, many games would degenerate into the same experiences each time you played, and that would become boring very fast. But RNG can definitely be overdone. The bounds of RNG in paper card games like Magic the Gathering were somewhat limited by the physical medium. Effects like drawing a random card from the deck, damaging a random character, or creating a random card were more trouble than they were worth because they required you to carry around a ton of extra props like dice and counters. But with the advent of digital CCGs, RNG has become incredibly easy to do without requiring extra time or game pieces, and games like Hearthstone haven't hesitated to take advantage of this. So what is the effect of RNG in a collectible card game? Well, it's a little complicated because there are different types of RNG. There's the initial shuffle of the deck, inherent to all card games, which is generally accepted as fine, even when you draw terrible and your opponent draws perfectly. But for this segment, I'm going to mainly refer to RNG as cards that are based on significantly random effects. Let's take a brief pause to explain the concept of emotional capital. You can think of emotional capital as a sum of all the positive emotional resources you have available. These are things like self-esteem, confidence, happiness, and trust. Imagine a stack of poker chips in front of you that represent your emotional state. When something really good happens, you get more chips. When things go really sour, you lose chips. Okay, now that we have an understanding of emotional capital, let's talk about how RNG can affect this. When you're losing a game, and the effect of an RNG card swings the game in your favor, not only avoiding an inevitable loss, but also leading to a win for you purely because of the RNG result, you get some emotional chips. You feel good because you were saved. You feel good because you won. You might even be entertained because the result was so unlikely, yet it somehow happened. But you might also feel your victory was a little cheapened due to the outcome which was a result of luck rather than skill and you might feel a little bad for your opponent, empathizing how he might feel. But overall, the result is positive for you. All these feelings considered, we'll call this an average to above average deposit of emotional chips for you. Now let's flip the scenario. You're winning the game, and the effect of an RNG card swings the game in your opponent's favor, not only avoiding your inevitable win, but leading to a loss purely because of the RNG result. How do you feel? Well, you feel bad because you lost. You feel frustrated because you were winning and that was taken away from you. You feel some amount of despair because it wasn't your fault. Any skill you exhibited was not only not rewarded, but it was punished, and your opponent's luck was rewarded. And in many cases, there was nothing you could have done to avoid it. In addition to feeling upset and frustrated, you might even lose a bit of trust in the game and its creators for consciously enabling scenarios like this for players. Wondering things like, why would they even allow things like this to happen? How could this possibly be good for anyone? All these feelings considered, we'll call this an above average to heavy withdrawal of emotional chips for you. 
Putting it all together, you can see that when a single game-swinging RNG interaction occurs, one player experiences an average to above average deposit of emotional chips, while the other player experiences an above average to heavy withdrawal of emotional chips. Why is the bad worth more chips than the good? It's because of a psychological phenomenon called the negativity bias, or the notion that things of a negative or bad nature have a stronger impact on our psychological state than positive things do. And to make things even worse, due to the way our brains function, bad memories are also easier to remember and linger longer than good ones do. Getting back to our example, you can see how a single RNG swing results in a net loss of emotional capital across both players, because more emotional chips are withdrawn than deposited. And when you consider just your own emotional bank account, over time, these types of RNG interactions will eventually drain your chips, and you risk going emotionally bankrupt if there aren't enough deposits made from other experiences in the game. One last but important consideration here is that game swinging RNG has a different effect on a viewing audience than it does on the players. While the players might experience a net loss of emotional capital, a viewing audience will eat this stuff up. When RNG swings a game unpredictably, the crowd goes wild as casters shout things like, Oh my god, what were the chances of that? Esports! So what's the TLDR here? Am I saying that RNG is bad and should be entirely removed so that all games are made to be more like chess? Absolutely not. RNG can be a fun and exciting addition to collectible card games that creates highly dynamic scenarios and promotes creative problem solving among players, but designers need to be cautious not to overdo it Otherwise, players might find themselves going emotionally bankrupt and switching to a game that makes them feel better more often. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on RNG and collectible card games. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.